going to have now uh, Stephen Whitmarsh and Atau Tanaka. They're going to um, present some interesting stuff. I'm just going to introduce them for uh, those of you who, including me. Um, Stephen Whitmarsh is, um, has a PhD in neuroscience at, uh, from Dunder Center for Cognitive Neuroscience and also an MA in Art and Media Production at Lincoln Peak University. Um, he works at the Paris Brain Institute studying epilepsy and at MSH Paris North uh, as part of the BBDMI team. For, um, on the other side, we have Atau Tanaka, who is a researcher in embodied musical interaction where muscle sensing turns the human body into a musical instrument. He has worked at Arkham Apple, France, Sony CSL, album releases on Super Pang, Sub Rosa, Touch Ash, Sheer Records, and performances and exhibitions all over the world. Um, he works at Bristol Interaction Group, MSH Paris No, uh, and Goldsmiths, where he is commissioning editor for the Sonics series at Goldsmiths Press. Uh, thank you very much for being here. Uh, I'm going to close the mic right now and leave you to the audience. Thank you. Great. Okay, thank you very much for the introduction. Um, now I'm in uh, speaking into the void, but I can see myself uh, on split screen with Stephen there in the main hall. So that's fantastic. Meanwhile, we will get into this, but Stephen and I are in a separate network connection uh, sending data and audio between London and Paris. Um, so to explain all this, um, I will share my screen. And um, as I get um, up to do this, I just want to uh, thank Adriana Sa for taking the initiative to host ICLI this year. I have fond memories of the last time we were physically there in Lisbon for ICLI uh, a few years ago, uh, but really great to do the hybrid uh, today and to follow Kate. Uh, Alex and Miguel. Okay, so he, I'm going to share. Um, let's see if this works. Yes, this seems to work. Okay, uh, so the project that Stephen and I are part of um, in Paris is called the Brain Body Digital Musical Instrument, and that's what our presentation is today. What does this mean? Let's see. Oh, here we go. So brain body digital musical instrument, BBDMI equals EMG plus EEG plus UCD. Now, what does this mean? Um, we'll learn about uh, EMG and EEG. UCD, we will talk less about, um, but it has to do with user-centered design. So the BBDMI is a three and a half year project funded by the French um, research agencies um, in the area of the digital revolution, uh, where we will seek to make a new uh, musical instrument that interfaces with um, the body and the brain, okay. uh, and that we will publish um, under principles of open science. That means our code will be open source and the hardware that we will produce will be open hardware. It does bring together then uh, humanities research in music with neuroscience, and with a focus on working with users. The partners are then the lead, um, uh, the Maison de Sciences de l'Homme Paris Nord, which is a big humanities research lab. I seem to have lost my share screen there in the hall, um, or let's see, that's okay. Um, uh, the CICM Musique Danse, which is a um, computer music research lab at the University of Paris 8. Um, the Hôpital Salpetriere in Paris, where Stephen um, is a neuroscientist working at the Institut du Cerveau or the Paris Brain Institute, um, and Soissons Circuit, a small uh, design consultancy and startup. Okay. Okay, so everyone says I can still see my share. Well, that's good. Okay, so I'm looking at something else. Uh, great. So, if, as long as people are seeing, um, so what we see um, in the upper right is a, is a quick image of the hardware we're producing. Uh, 
we see Stephen performing brain music in the lower left. And just as an example of users, this is a gig uh, that I did last year at the Sonic Protest Festival, um, trying electromyogram on an autistic musician called Sika Noise. So part of our user work is to explain the diversity of people that we're working with so that we're not just dealing with virtual so electronic musicians in the systems that we create. Okay, so first a really quick review of what we're trying to capture in a musical way. We are dealing with neurological biosignals. Okay, these are electrical signals of the central nervous system. Okay, the body produces electricity in the form of little tiny microvolt spikes of nerve cells okay? um, and that can be picked up by electrodes, either needle electrodes that we stick in um, to the skin or surface electrodes, hospital gel electrodes that I'm sure many of you will be familiar with that we stick onto the skin. So the body produces electricity. The body produces electricity because the central nervous system, where the brain um, is in interaction with what the body does, okay, uh, can be picked up at the level of the brain and at the level at the other extremity of the limbs. So as many of you may know, I have worked for a long time with the electromyogram signal, the muscle signal, okay, in music. So this is at the end of the limbs where um, electrical potentials uh, represent motor action, motor unit actions, okay? Um, muscle cells that are contracting, okay? That let out an electronic pulse every time they contract. This gives us a stochastic pulse train, therefore an inharmonic signal that's somewhere in the zero to thousand Hertz frequency range. Meanwhile, back at command central in the brain, the brain electricity is captured in the form of a signal called the electroencephalogram. And this reflects brain activity in the different cortexes or the cortices of the brain, visual uh, cortex, auditory cortex, motor cortex, amongst others. We can pick up signals that are um, uh, in response to events, so event-related potentials. And a famous one is something called the P300 signal, which happens with a little bit of delay um, between 20 milliseconds and half a second after a stimulus, okay? Or uh, more steady state oscillations of, neur um, um, of the neuron activity, neural activity. Uh, and quite often we're, uh, we're quite familiar um, with what are called alpha waves from the brain in the eight to 14 Hertz range that um, are a reflection of relative states of relaxation or focused attention. So both EMG and EEG are electrical signals from the body okay, at different ends of um, the body. Um, and they represent different things. Okay. The muscle EMG, we can say, deals with voluntary movement. Although there are involuntary muscles, mostly when we think about uh, using um, muscle as an interface, we're dealing with voluntary limb movement. And what I've observed as a musician, that this is a sensor that's quite different from using other sensors in an embodied interaction. We, Many of you may be familiar with using computer vision systems, webcams, connect systems, or accelerometers and inertial measurement units. Those, or motion capture systems, those systems pick up human movement after it happens. I've noticed in my work with the electromyogram that in fact, I'm picking up the intention of a movement before it happens or as it happens. So in here, we're looking, we're not observing the result of movement. We're looking at the body in its intent to make movement. And this therefore allows us very quick forms of interaction. The brain on the other side um, may look at cognitive response. That may be just a response that's involuntary, but may be quite voluntary 
in what we're thinking, what we're intending again to do. So the brain EEG is very good at picking up response to stimuli. We can track things like attention, surprise, our ability uh, to predict. We can look at changes in state, various forms of arousal, in the intention coming from the preparation of making a motor gesture, okay, to various ways in which we control the body and therefore our relationship to the environment around us. But overall, we can think of the brain EEG in slower, more evolving interaction. So perhaps in this way, the electromyogram and the electroencephalogram are complementary. So what if we now try to capture these in music? Okay. We have heard about brain music. Okay. Uh, Stephen is a practitioner of that with his group, the EEG synth. I'm a practitioner of muscle music with the electromyogram. We're not alone in these endeavors. The picture that you see, Alvin Lucier, with what may be the first brainwave music piece in 1966, music for solo performer. Okay. And 50 years later, uh, a colleague and friend, Federico Visi in Berlin, working with muscle systems and electronic music performance. But already, even in these pictures, we see the complementarities of slow and fast interaction. Lucier's piece being on stage and ostensibly doing nothing to make a series of percussion instruments resonate. Federico's case, remixing and very much in movement on stage with his muscle interface. <clears throat> so what are the different configurations that might allow us to link together electromyogram and electroencephalogram in what I call multimodal musical interaction. <clears throat> Could we imagine EMG and EEG on a single musician? Could we capture limb movement and track the brain activity that brings us to that movement? Okay. Or could we imagine EEG on a performer and do some kind of audience tracking with EEG in the audience. EMG on stage, EEG in the hall, to maybe then watch a piece of gestural performance on stage and track the audience uh, response and perhaps have that feedback into uh, modulating a sonic landscape. These are all possibilities. And these are some of the configurations that we're studying in the BBDMI project. Today, what we're going to hear is a duet between an EMG performer, myself, and an EEG performer, Stephen, who's there with his um, um, brain head cap on, now, as well as headphones. So that's, a, that's a, yeah, he's got a lot on his head and quite a bit on his mind. Okay, um, and before we wrap up with this part of the presentation, just a quick um, information and advertisement about the hardware we're creating in the BBDMI project. Um, at the end of some of my previous European projects, um, at Goldsmiths, we created a board called the EVI board. We presented it a couple of years ago at the NIME conference in Brazil. Uh, we made this prototype with Martin Klang, who is a well-known modular synthesizer um, a designer. Uh, he's got a company called Rebel Technology. Within Rebel Tech is um, uh, an audio signal processing framework called OWL. Uh, that's very, very interesting. Getting uh, sophisticated audio signal processing chains running on microcontroller uh, platforms. We are using this to process not just audio, but the biosignal itself. With that, then, we bring um, biosignals uh, into an audio signal processing uh, pipeline. Um, Martin, as a modular synthesizer designer, has made a, a biosignal device that is already designed for music. Because it runs this OWL signal processing framework, because it is a class compliant audio and MIDI device. Um, it connects via USB and Bluetooth, and we will be publishing the designs as we progress um, under the spirit of open hardware. And with Stephen now, we're starting to look at uh, taking the existing EVEMG. We have to see if it's good enough to do EEG. Um, and with plans in either case to expand the design to fully um, uh, accommodate electroencephalogram. So the performance you're going to hear today 
is a remote performance. We would have liked to have been in Lisbon with you, uh, but I'm here in London. Stephen is in Paris. Equally, uh, we're not the only ones uh, zooming in, uh, so it is a hybrid conference. Um, just very quickly, uh, then we need to put into motion different uh, the practices of network music performance that go back to before COVID, before Zoom and Skype, uh, etc. I was an early practitioner um, in this realm before those systems existed to create an installation uh, that you see there on the upper right called Global String, 20 years ago now, uh, at the V2 Art Center, the very same art center that has just published Miguel's book. Uh, Stephen and I did an internet radio um, broadcast of EEG and EMG music for the Pi Node uh, Collective in Paris a couple years ago. That's Stephen there in his studio um, with a single, or that's the, that must be the ground of his um, um, reference of his uh, EEG. And then um, also during lockdown, um, various uh, corona related performance opportunities. Uh, there I am on a Zoom screen performing in Linz, Austria with the Chicks on Speed live on stage for the Corona Improv at Ars Electronica. Um, since then, I've had a project funded by UK research councils called Hybrid Live that puts us in partnership with Stanford University in California um, and with a cultural partner on each side. So in London, we have Eclectic, the new music venue, and at Stanford, they work with SF Jazz. And there in the lower picture, you see um, a performance we did last year connecting jazz musicians between SF Jazz in San Francisco and Eclectic in London. We use a technology coming from Stanford University um, called Jack Trip, and that's what Stephen and I um, will use today. Um, We'd like to thank Cynthia Payne, who I think has joined us online for her help getting um, uh, the configuration set up. And we're hoping it's still running. We had to reconnect to our JackTrip server just about five minutes ago. So if I would only shut up, uh, we might get it run, uh, the performance going while it's still running. But I think I've got one last slide. So just to show today, I'm in London. I've got four channels of electromyogram. Um, I'm playing granular synthesis on my system with that, but I'm also sending open sound control messages to Paris of just the electromyogram data. The granular synthesis that's being synthesized here on my laptop is going to be streamed to Paris over JackTrip. So Stephen then gathers my performance audio and performance data and adds to that as an electroencephalogram brain music performer on his modular synthesizer system. So he is generating um, music from his brain waves hooked up to his modular synth, and he's processing network input from me. The OSC message is going straight into as modulators into his modular synthesizer, and my audio stream coming in through Jack Trip that get processed by the modular synthesizer. And there you see a screenshot of our test yesterday. Um, my Max patch there, uh, a Zoom screen showing Stevens pure data patch and modular synthesizer, and then the various um, utilities that we need to run uh, loop back to feed uh, Max into Jack. Jack, which is feeding up to Jack Trip, Jack Trip, uh, which is connected to a server somewhere in London and my own webcam image. So we're going to uh, give you a short performance um, of that, uh, so long as everything is still running. But before we do, I thought I'd pass over to Stephen um, for a little presentation from him. Yeah, can you all hear me, hear me well? Um, so yeah, so I also would like to start thanking uh, Cynthia Payne for, for her help. Uh, the last two days setting up Jack Trip and the organizers of the conference for this opportunity to for us to really uh, develop this performance for for this uh, conference. So it's a great opportunity and a great challenge. Uh, so it is definitely one of the more complex <laughs> batches that I've uh, been able to do. Uh, well, we'll see. Uh, the, the, you saw me look just next to me the whole time because we have I have some things that keep bugging out, and so I'm just hoping everything holds together uh, for today. 
Uh, as um, uh, so you don't see me apparently um, well I will let me at least start by sharing um, for one second one thing that I would like to show you um, is uh, okay well let me uh, okay Sorry for this. Um, so can you see my shared screen? Okay, so um, as um, as Ata was saying, we have uh, uh, several ways in which you patch. I just wanted to show you the patch that I've created for the EEG and with this maybe also introduce a little bit uh, of the, um, the processing that will be occurring. Uh, as you see, uh, uh, I'm wearing a EEG headset. Um, courtesy of uh, Mentalab. It's the Mentalab Explore. It's a new EEG device uh, recently on the market. Uh, it is the smallest one available. You can see the amplifier there and you can see several electrodes distributed uh, on my head, uh, mainly on the back of my head for occipital lobe where I will be recording alpha activity and on the motor cortices where I will be uh, recording beta activity. Um, and those will be patched in, in different ways, as Satel explained, uh, to the uh, modular synthesizer. Now, just to reiterate, perhaps, because it was a lot what Atau said and, and, and something we're proud of what we've just been able to accomplish is that uh, we record this, I record this EEG wirelessly onto my desktop, which I'm sitting behind now. Uh, we're streaming that via LSL, which is a... Um, a, a protocol for data transfer very much increasingly used for laboratory setups where we use EEG, EMG, etc. Uh, low latency, uh, continuous signals. And those we then um, uh, retrieve using our own uh, Python toolbox. And that's the EEG synth, which you are now seeing the patch for, um, which we uh, share uh, openly. Uh, for other people to uh, to further develop uh, both the source code as well as uh, sort of examples and, and, and potentially reenactments of whatever we uh, we develop over these years. Uh, so this has been uh, developed for uh, a handful of years uh, with uh, together with Robert Osenfeld of the Donde Center, where we have a uh, different mo software modules in which we do basic EEG um, processing, such as um, uh, retrieving the spectrum of an EEG, filtering, uh, interaction with uh, music devices, MIDI, OSC, LSL, etc. Uh, so that's the EEG synth on GitHub. I just wanted you to see that and. Um, and then, um, so let me go back to the uh, the description. Uh, so once we have this LSL data, we I process a different spectra, and those spectra can be live manipulated. Because as you will see, for example, my alpha, uh, everybody has a different alpha peak. My alpha peak turns out to be pretty low in frequency, uh, so I can shift it to be optimally sensitive to my brain activity. Um, and then we tra I transform those signals into uh, scaled and calibrated OSC signals, which are then sent to a, a pure data patch on this desktop, which takes care of sending it to a DC coupled audio device, the Expert Sleepers ES9 in the modular synthesizer. That pure data patch also receives the OSC signals from a tau that are generated with his EMG. Uh, and those are also sent similarly to the modular. Now I have a separate laptop uh, connected to JackTrip from which I collect the audio signals from Atau, which are then fed into an audio interface into the modular as well. So here is where everything comes together. Um, and so let me share you the uh, setup that we're using. Um, so that would be... There we go. Um, so here we uh, should see the, uh, or you should see, voila, 
our uh, our beautiful faces. Uh, here on the left, you see the pure data patch uh, churning through the numbers received both by the EEG and by the EMG. In the bottom, I show you three channels which are derived from eight electrodes on the brain, on the scalp. Um, as you can see, uh, it's very responsive to um, to noise. So during the performance, just like Olive, uh, just like Lucier, I would be trying to to relax and not move, use my, my my muscles too much because if I do, that again interferes. This is one of the challenges as well in the signal processing that we face at the BBDMI project, how to integrate signal analysis of those two signals. Now those are sent to the uh, here to the ES9. Now what you will see in the bottom are these three channels. Then in the middle here, a spectrum of, uh, in this case, the first channel as a demonstration. And so what I will do is I will close my eyes, relax, and then I hope what you will see is my alpha peak starting to peak in between those two red lines. So bear with me, I hope I can relax sufficiently for this. So there you go. Uh, you might have seen also on the time course uh, this very oscillatory pattern, which is in my case around 9 hertz, uh, 9 to 10 hertz. And then on the right, you see calibrated uh, uh, control signals derived from these power values uh, that are sent to the uh, to the modular synthesizer, which is a little board here on the where my cursor is. And from there on, uh, we patch. Now I can, as a short demonstration before we start together, I hope you will hear a drone. So this is a complex oscillator that I will be able to fold based on my alpha activity. So the point here is that we are discovering these different configurations, of course, and one of the configurations is who the, the, the relationship between the listener and the, the brain and the music. And so I would like to just emphasize, for example, that we can take a, a active, image, active listening approach here where we are not so much controlling the, the, the music. I am, for example, also not controlling a Tau's music, but my, I can listen to, to that degree that a synchronicity can occur or a relationship can occur between my brain response and the music, which then in turn modulates the sound. So David Rosenboom calls this uh, active imagination, active imaginative listening. And I think it's a good, uh, you know, um, pin to put in there. Um, that we're not just dealing with control, but also we're sort of embedding our own um, mind and 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 um, and, and, and uh, intentions within a a musical system. Okay, uh, I will also uh, for a quick demonstration uh, uh, let you listen to Atal in the patch. Uh, so Atal, if you could try, let's see. Hold on, just a sec. Have you got original audio turned on? Oh, Sorry, that was me. Yeah. So as you can uh, can see and hear. So Atau is creating his own, has his own sound engine, but then his control signals are also in, uh, influenced in the modulation through several filters in the modular synthesizer, creating this further loop uh, in the system. And then of course, I will be interacting with it with my brain activity as well. Um, so without further ado, I think um, we can uh, start playing around a bit. This is all improvisation and uh, so please bear with us um, and I'll shut down the microphone and uh, I'll see you back in, uh, in 10, 10, 15 minutes. minutes. Atal, Stephen, have you, have you turned on the, uh, yeah, did you Are turn on the original can, audio? Sorry, I can hear you now again. Yeah. yeah did you turn on the original audio? With the screen uh, the okay. Let me double check. I think so. Yeah. Good. I heard you in stereo. Good.
Wow, <laughs> that was great to hear that. Wow. I've never heard Zoom applause like that. That was good. That was too late to hear. But, ah, uh, it's recorded, I think. Uh, oh. yeah. Encore. Oh. It was so great. Normally, I don't use uh, headphones uh, because of uh, potential interference with the EEG, but the fact how much you can get into it is, uh, is so much stronger. Oh. Right. And yeah, I'm just in my at my desk, as you can see, uh, but uh, it got me into a space, uh, um, yeah, with headphones uh, that um, was somehow spatial, but uh, quick enough in its response to feel connected somehow, both to Stephen uh, and then to you all in Lisbon. So thank you very much. Yes, thank you. And um, yeah, it was a complex and increasingly complex patch where, mm -hmm. which is the, the interesting thing, I think it relates a bit to the previous speakers that things become complex and playful to the point that, you know, it's, um, you really just have to go with, with what's happening. Um, and so yeah, I think at one moment uh, I was listening, I thought I was listening to you, but I was listening to myself and, you know, things like this. So I don't know if I cut you out too much at one point. Uh, my apologies for that. <laughs> no, no, no. It was good. Yeah. And I, I always found that in ensemble performance when you lose when you lose track of what yourself you yourself are doing, but then that you get it back. And it's sort of having agency but letting go and then losing it and then coming back to clarity are always parts of dynamic that I find whether uh, it's in electronic music or in acoustic music, uh, in instrumental music or otherwise. Yeah. And so I enjoyed that. Yeah, the next so, thing, uh, so last thing is just, I wish we could see each other um, face to face. That would have, uh, I, was, I was speaking a little bit to the screen to see you. Um, but I think for next time we should have, uh, uh, yeah. should really be able to see each other. That's part of the hybrid life project is to try to look to create visual representations uh, to go along you know, with Jack Trip that are synchronous. Uh, I had a good view of the whole thing. Um, and so uh, by looking at the share screen and the way that the presentation was done uh, in the auditorium there um, in Lisbon helped me to see what you were all seeing, but I saw myself and saw Stephen. So. So we've obviously gone on for a very long time, uh, but uh, and and the others have foregone uh, the questions uh, and answers. And so Adriana, I don't know what you would like to do now. To um, I'm sure there must be questions uh, for Miguel and Kate and Alex as well. And we don't want to take that away. Yeah. Uh, okay. Thank you for the awesome. Can you can you hear me? Yes. Okay. Hello. Thank you for the fantastic performance.